America's most evil states, the most serial killer victims. We're diving into the dark side of American crime history today. From the Pacific Northwest to the Midwest, we'll take you on a chilling journey through the states that have seen the most serial killer victims. So get ready to uncover the dark secrets of America's deadliest states and the terrifying killers that have haunted their streets. Grab some popcorn, let's get started. Let's start with California. From its diverse geography that ranges from sandy beaches to towering mountains to famous landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge and Mount Whitney, California has a lot to offer. But did you also know that California is famous for something not so pleasant? That's right, California has had some of the most infamous serial killers in US history. Despite all its beauty and attractions, the state has a dark side that we can't ignore. So, the next time you're planning a road trip down California 1, just remember to be aware of your surroundings. California has had a significant number of serial killing cases throughout history. Arcadia Publishing states that over 1,600 California residents have been murdered by serial killers since 1900. The FBI's publication on serial murder notes that California has been one of the states to produce the most serial killers nationwide. Between the 1960s and 1980s, serial killings more than doubled in California and throughout the United States, instilling terror into the general population. In addition, the Murder Accountability Project, which compiles data from the FBI's Uniform Crime Report, reports that California has the most unsolved homicides and cold cases in the country. Although the exact number of serial Serial killing cases in California is not provided by the sources, there have been several notorious serial killers in California's history. Ranker lists 16 of the scariest and most deranged serial killers in California's history. Here are some of the most notable cases. The Golden State Killer, also known as the East Area Rapist and the original Night Stalker. This prolific predator is suspected of committing at least 13 murders and 45 sexual assaults in California throughout the 70s and 80s before suddenly stopping his rampage in 86. William G. Bonin, the free killer. In 1979, a mutilated body of a 13-year-old boy was found in Agura in Los Angeles County. Bonin was later convicted of 14 murders, although he's suspected of killing as many as 36 people. Rodney Alcala, the dating game killer. Alcala had already killed a number of women when he appeared on a 1978 episode of The Dating Game. He was later convicted of killing seven people and is suspected of killing many more. The Night Stalker. Richard Ramirez, dubbed the Night Stalker, terrorized Southern California in the mid-1980s. He was convicted of 13 teen murders, and numerous other crimes. The Hillside Strangler, Angelo Buono Jr., and Kenneth Bianchi were responsible for the deaths of at least 10 young women in the hills around Los Angeles in the late 1970s. Recently, there's been a series of shootings in Stockton, California, that authorities suspect may be the work of a serial killer. The shootings have claimed the lives of at least six men, and police are investigating the possibility that they are all connected. According to the Murder Accountability Project, California has the most unsolved homicides and cold cases in the country, with an estimated number of unsolved homicides exceeding 340,000 from 1965 to 2021. Additionally, California has the highest number of total serial killer victims in the country, with 1,777, according to a report by the World Population Review. It is clear that California has had a significant and disturbing history of serial killing cases. The state has produced many notorious and vicious killers. Next is Texas. Hey guys, ever heard of Texas? It's a massive state with over 30 million people and a diverse economy, including oil, gas, agriculture, and technology. Impressive, right? It is a state with a lot to offer, but just like every state, it's not without its flaws. And unfortunately, that includes a history of serial killings and serial killers. Texas has a long and disturbing history of notorious serial killers. While the exact number of serial killing cases in Texas is unclear, it is estimated that the state has been home to some of the most prolific and sadistic serial killers in the United States. Billy Shemirmir, a Kenyan boy, born man who worked as a healthcare worker in Texas has been convicted of killing 25 elderly people and is believed to have killed many more. Shemir Mir was arrested in 2018 after a woman survived his attack and was able to give police a description of him. He was caught throwing a jewelry box belonging to one of his victims in the dumpster, leading to his arrest. Phantom Killer One of the first serial killers in Texas history, the Phantom Killer murdered five people and wounded three others between February and May of 1946. Known as the Texarkana Moonlight Murders, the case caused wide spread panic in the border town of Texarkana. The Texas Killing Fields, a stretch of land in southeast Texas, has been the site of dozens of murders and disappearances, many of which remain unsolved. In 2022, a man named William Reese confessed to four of the killings and is believed to be responsible for several others. Kenneth McDuff, a notorious Texas serial killer who abducted and murdered a group of teenagers in 1966 before being paroled in 1989 and proceeding to murder at least five more women. Tommy Lynn Sells, a serial killer who is believed to have murdered 
22 people in several states, including Texas. He committed two of his murders in San Antonio in 1998 and 1999, and one in Del Rio in 1999, Carl Eugene Watts. If Henry Lee Lucas did indeed lie about all his murders, then Carl Eugene Watts becomes the most prolific Texas serial killer of them all. He is believed to have started killing when he was 20, choosing female victims between the ages of 14 and 44, before kidnapping them, torturing them, and killing them. Additionally, a 2009 initiative identified 600 victims and upwards of 275 suspects in Texas, with the state leading the nation in unsolved serial highway homicides at that time. Not all cases of serial killing have been solved or even discovered, but the actual number of cases in Texas may be much higher. While the exact number of serial killing cases in Texas is unknown, it is clear that the state has had a disturbingly high number of notorious serial killers throughout its history. There were approximately 22,581 unsolved murders in Texas. This includes cases that may or may not involve serial killings. However, two years prior to 2009, Texas led the nation in unsolved serial highway homicides. This suggests that there have been multiple unsolved serial killing cases in Texas. The Texas Ranger Unsolved Crimes Investigation Program created in 2001 focuses on providing law enforcement agencies with a process for investigating unsolved murders or what appear to be serial or linked criminal transactions. The program's website includes a list of the top 12 cold case investigations that the Texas Rangers are currently working on, but it is unclear how many of these cases involve serial killings specifically. Florida is number three on this list. Let's talk about Florida. The Sunshine State is a popular tourist destination with warm weather, beaches, and numerous waterways perfect for fishing and boating. But like many other states, Florida has its own dark history and dark side. So whether you're interested in the state's natural beauty or its unique history of having so many serial killings, murder cases, and interesting phenomena, there's always more to discover in the Sunshine State. Florida has had a significant number of serial killing cases throughout its history. The estimated number of victims and the ranking of Florida in comparison to other states. Florida has unfortunately been the location of many notorious serial killings. Some of the most well-known cases include David Allen Gore, a serial killer who confessed to and was convicted of six murders in Vero Beach and Indian River County, Florida in the 1980s. Gore was executed by lethal injection in 2012 after spending 28 years on Florida's death row. Danny Rowling, Ted Bundy, and Eileen Wuornos. All three committed their infamous murders in Florida. Rowling killed five college students in Gainesville in 1990, while Bundy killed at least three women in Florida in 1978. Wonos killed seven men in Florida in the late 1980s and was executed in 2002. Bobby Joe Long, a serial killer who kidnapped, raped, and murdered at least 10 women in and around Tampa, Florida from March to November of 1984. Prior to these murders, Long had raped at least 50 victims all over Florida. Otis Toole, a serial killer who committed arson, cannibalism, and was convicted of more than six murders. He died at age 49 from cirrhosis of the liver while in Florida State Prison. The Hernando Killer, a serial killer who murdered four Florida women and a California woman he met during a trip with his brother. The grisly crimes of this killer are chronicled on websites like Serial Dispatches. Florida has had a significant number of serial killing cases throughout its history, with a total of 778 documented victims of serial killings since 1900. However, the exact number of cases and victims may vary, as there are a lot of unsolved cases. According to the information found, there were around 19,064 unsolved homicides in Florida between 1980 and 2019, out of which previously 55,895 total unsolved murders. That's an alarming 34% yet unsolved, of which there's currently no way to know those related to serial killing cases specifically. And number four is Illinois. Illinois, the sixth most populous and 25th most extensive state in the US. It's known for agriculture, producing corn, soybeans, and pumpkins, and has celebrated 200 years of statehood. Oh wait, it also has one of the highest number of serial killing victims in the country. One of the most well-known is H.H. Holmes, who is often referred to as America's first serial killer. He committed his murders in the late 1800s, including during the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. Another notorious serial killer is John Wayne Gay Casey, who was convicted of murdering at least 33 young men and boys in the 1970s. Other notable serial killers from Illinois include Johann Otto Hoch, who went by the pseudonym John Otto Schmidt and was hanged in 1906 for killing one spouse, but is suspected of killing many more. Raymond Lee Stewart, who terrorized the Rockford area for a week in 1981, and Larry Eiler, known as the Highway Killer, for targeting male hitchhikers in the 1980s. In more recent news, Samuel Little, who died in 2020, has been called the nation's most prolific serial killer and is believed to 
to have committed at least 60 murders across the United States, including several in Granite City, Illinois. There are also unsolved cases such as the 1924 murder of an Illinois family in Ina, which remains a mystery to this day. In 2014, Nicholas Sheely was found guilty of murdering four people in a two-day killing spree in Illinois and Missouri. Another case involved a group of men known as the Ripper Crew, who were accused of being part of a satanic cult that abducted, tortured, mutilated, and killed women. The group included Robin Gecht, Edward Spritzer, and brothers Andrew and Thomas Coccarelles. According to Project Cold Case, in Illinois, nearly 340,000 cases of homicide and non-negligent manslaughter went unsolved from 1965 to 2021, and the rate at which homicides are solved has been declining during the past five decades. Uncovered.com reports that approximately 31,376 homicides in Illinois were unsolved as of their last update, while roughly 17,650 murders were solved throughout the years. The Illinois State Police website lists 24 unsolved murders since September 1974, and HuffPost has reported on 12 of those unsolved crimes. Like the other states, not all homicides are committed by serial killers, and not all unsolved homicides are due to the work of serial killers. It is difficult to determine the exact number of serial killing cases in Illinois throughout history, though, as not all cases may have been identified or classified as such. However, the state has clearly had its share of notorious serial killers. And now, the big and mighty New York. New York, with over 20 million people, is a geographically diverse state with mountains, lakes, forests, and coastal areas. But like many other states on this list, New York also has its dark side. Despite its bright lights and busy streets, it's home to a number of serial killers. So, while you're enjoying everything this amazing state has to offer, it's important to stay aware of your surroundings. It is difficult to determine the exact number of serial killing cases that have occurred in New York throughout history. However, some of the sources provide information related to serial killings and murder in New York. New York has a history of serial killers, with many infamous cases that have captivated the public's attention. One of the most notorious cases is that of the Gilgo Beach serial killer, who is believed to be responsible for the deaths of at least 10 victims over more than a decade. New information on four victims was released by police in May of 2022. This case has inspired a Netflix movie and documentaries. In the late 1970s, the city was terrorized by the Son of Sam murders committed by David Berkowitz, who targeted young women and couples. The case resulted in the largest manhunt in New York history history, and Berkowitz was eventually arrested and sentenced to life in prison. In 2021, a New Jersey serial killer, Richard Cottingham, was identified as the perpetrator of a double murder in 1974, as well as other killings in New Jersey and New York. He was known for his brutality and was eventually caught and sentenced to life in prison. Other notorious serial killers from New York include Vincent Johnson, the Brooklyn Strangler, Lizzie Halliday, New York's first known female serial killer, Joel Rifkin, Arthur Shawcross, Robert Shulman, and Michael Bruce Ross. Mary Beth Tinning, a resident of Schenectady, New York, York was a serial child murderer who killed all nine of her own children between 1975 and 1985. Finally, there are also several infamous serial killers from Buffalo and Western New York, including Altemio Sanchez, the bike path killer slash rapist. The history of serial killings in New York is a dark and disturbing one, with many cases that have left a lasting impact on the state's criminal history. World Population Review ranks states in the US by the number of total serial killer victims with New York at 677. There have been many unsolved murders and serial killing cases in New York. One specific case of an unsolved serial killing in New York is the Long Island serial killer, also known as the Giglo Beach Killer, or the Craigslist Ripper. This killer is believed to have killed between 10 and 17 people over the course of two decades in Long Island, and nearly 10 years after the first body was discovered, police have yet to catch the predator or predators responsible. For example, an article from Hudson Valley Post reports that police across New York State are investigating nearly 40 unsolved homicides and are seeking the public's help. Number six, we have Ohio. Ohio, the Buckeye State, is in the Midwest, home to many famous people and firsts and attractions like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Cedar Point. Unfortunately, Ohio is known for having a serial killer season, which is not so great. Ohio has had several serial killing cases throughout history. Ohio has been listed to have a total of 505 serial killer victims, but this information is not broken down by individual cases. Here are some of the most well-known. Anthony Sowell, aka Cleveland Strangler. Sowell was a brutal Ohio-born serial killer who killed at least 11 women in Cleveland between 2007 and 2009. He was also accused of abusing a corpse and more than 70 counts of rape, kidnapping, and evidence tampering. Gary Heidnick. Heidnick is one of Ohio's most disturbing serial killers. He imprisoned and tortured six women after having lived through a rough childhood filled with abuse and bullying. Heidnick scored 148 on an IQ test and is considered to be one of the most repulsive serial killers in American history. Jeffrey Dahmer. Although he's more commonly associated with the 
16 murders he committed in Milwaukee, Dahmer grew up in Northeast Ohio. Anthony Kirkland. Kirkland burned each of his victims' bodies to try and conceal the evidence of rape. He murdered his 27-year-old girlfriend, Leola Douglas, in May of 1987 for refusing to have sex with him and rejecting his sexual advances. Other notable Ohio-born serial killers include Robert Verdella, who killed six young men in Kansas City, Missouri between 1984 and 1987, and was originally from Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. There have been several unsolved serial killing cases in Ohio over the years, including the infamous Torso murders in Cleveland in the 1930s and the Zodiac Killer, who operated in Ohio in the late 1980s. Additionally, there are several ongoing investigations into unsolved cases that may potentially be linked to serial killers. Ohio has a reputation for being a hub for serial killers, as it has produced some of the most infamous and deadly killers in the US. It is important to remember the victims and their families when discussing these horrific crimes. Then, we have Pennsylvania. Let's talk about Pennsylvania, one of the 13 original colonies with a diverse geography, bordered by several states, and known for its rich history and entertainment. However, Pennsylvania is not immune to the trend of serial killings that we've seen in some other states on this list. So, if you're planning a visit, it's important to be cautious and take care. The state has seen some of the most heinous and notorious serial killings in American history. Here's just a brief overview of some of the most prominent cases. Edward Surratt. Edward Surratt, a former trucker, has been in jail since the 1970s for the murder of four women. In 2021, he confessed to six more murders, bringing his total to ten. He's believed to have committed these murders between 1977 and 95. Dr. Morris Bulber. Dr. Morris Bulber is one of the most prolific serial killers in Pennsylvania's history. He's believed to have killed between 30 and 50 people between 1932 and 39. He was arrested in 39 and died in 1954. Harvey Miguel Robinson. Harvey Miguel Robinson is one of the youngest serial killers in American history. He was just 18 years old when he was arrested for the rape and murder of three people in Allentown in 1992 and 93. He is currently on death row. The Blue-Eyed Six. The Blue-Eyed Six were a group of men who killed a man named Joseph Raber for his life insurance money in 1878. They were caught and tried, and six of them were convicted and hanged. Robert Wayne Marshall. Robert Wayne Marshall is a serial killer who killed five people in 1980 and 81. He's currently on death row. Chester Turner. Chester Turner is a serial killer who killed at least 14 women in California and Pennsylvania between 1987 and 98. He is currently on death row in California. These are just a few examples of the many serial killings that have taken place in Pennsylvania. While some of these killers have been caught and brought to justice, others remain at large, and the full extent of their crimes may never be known. Some cases involving serial killers have been solved, while others remain unsolved. Uncovered.com reports that there are approximately 8,409 unsolved murders in Pennsylvania today, although it's not clear how many of these are specifically related to serial killings. Another article from the New York Post states that former trucker Edward Surratt, who is currently in jail for murders committed in the 70s, has confessed to six additional murders, suggesting that there may still be unsolved cases related to his crimes. A list of states with the most total serial killer victims found on worldpopulationreview.com ranks Pennsylvania as having 462 total victims, indicating that there have been at least some cases involving serial killers in the state. Michigan. Michigan, the 10th most populous state in the U.S., has the longest freshwater coastline in the country and a significant forestry and fishing industry. It's also home to the world's first three tunnels connecting two different countries. Now, let's talk about something a bit more serious. Michigan has had several notorious serial killers and incidents involving multiple homicides throughout its history. It's unclear exactly how many serial killing cases the state has had, but it's still a chilling thought to know that such crimes have taken place here. Some of the most infamous cases include those committed by John Norman Collins, also known as the Michigan Murderer. Between 1967 and 69, Collins terrorized the southeastern areas of Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti, abducting, raping, and murdering young women between the ages of 13 and 21. Eileen Wernos, another infamous serial killer, was born in Michigan and spent time in the state before committing a string of murders in Florida in the late 80s and early 90s. Donald Jean Miller, also known as the East Lansing Serial Killer, committed a series of six attacks in East Lansing, Michigan, between 1977 and 78, four of which resulted in fatalities. Miller later pleaded guilty to the crimes and received a lengthy prison sentence with a chance of parole. Carl Eugene Watts. He was responsible for the murder of at least 12 women in the 1980s. He was known for being a Sunday morning slasher who preyed on women in the early hours of the day. Watts was eventually caught and convicted, and he died in prison in 2007. In more recent years, there have been cases such as that of Kenyol Brown, who was charged in 2019 with a murder of three people in the Detroit area. In 2022, a serial killer known as the 
the Michigan Creeper was caught after a woman's body was found in Dearborn Heights. The search for the murderer had been ongoing since the 1990s, and the case was featured in a new TV docuseries. One article from Uncovered.com states that there are around 19,323 unsolved murders in Michigan alone. Project ColdCase.org offers some national statistics about unsolved homicides, stating that nearly 340,000 cases of homicide and non-negligent manslaughter went unsolved between 1965 and 2021. Georgia. Georgia, the peach state in the southeastern U.S., with vibrant cities, natural attractions, and rich history, admitted to the Union on the 2nd of January 1788. Georgia's history is also marked by a significant number of murders and serial killings. Uncovered.com states that there have been around 33,176 homicides in Georgia from 1980 to 2019, and approximately 11,482 homicides remain unsolved as of their latest update. Another search result from worldpopulationreview.com lists Georgia as having a rate of 4. 0.95 serial killers per million residents in 2023, which ranks it as the ninth state with the highest rate of serial killers. Georgia has had several notorious cases of serial killings. One of the most infamous is the Atlanta child murders, which took place between 1979 and 81. At least 28 black children between the ages of 7 and 17 were abducted and brutally murdered. The killer was finally apprehended and convicted in 1982, but some doubt remains about his guilt. More recently, there have been rumors of an active serial killer in the Atlanta area, following two murders in July 2021. However, the Atlanta police have denied these claims. There have been other cases of serial killers in Georgia as well. Joseph Dewey Aiken killed at least 18 people between 1990 and 91. Jack Edward Alderman killed one person in Georgia in 1974. Stanley Edward Allen is known to have killed at least one person in Georgia, although he is suspected of other murders as well. Georgia has also seen some of the worst mass murders in US history, such as the Woolfolk Massacre in 1887, where an entire family was killed with a hatchet and the 1973 Alde family murders, where seven members of a family were killed in their home. Washington, the state, not Washington, D.C., the capital. Did you know that Washington, a Pacific Northwest state, shares borders with British Columbia, Idaho, Oregon, and the Pacific Ocean? Named after George Washington, it was admitted to the Union in 1889. Now, here's something that might shock you. According to the Radford Serial Killer Database, there have been around 75 serial killers in Washington state since 1900. This makes it one of the states with a relatively high number of serial killers. Washington state has been the location of some of the most notorious serial killers in American history. One of them being the infamous Ted Bundy, who began his killing spree in the early 1970s and targeted primarily young college women. Another prolific killer is Gary Ridgway, also known as the Green River Killer, who was convicted of 48 murders but confessed to a staggering 71, spanning from 1982 to 98. His victims were often discovered along Washington's famous Green River. Washington has also had other serial killers, such as Wesley Allen Dodd, who was convicted of killing three young boys in 1989, and Robert Lee Yates, who was convicted of killing 30 13 women in the late 1990s. Other serial killers from Washington include Joseph Condro, Billy Goll, Martin Stickles, Charles Rodman Campbell, and Gary Grant. Apart from these notorious cases, there have also been unsolved murders in northern Washington, such as Jeffrey Little's 2009 murder, Jeff Reynolds' 1998 murder, Vicki Sylvie's 1997 murder, Donna Arrowsmith's 1993 murder, Lydia Varro Brashler's 2001 murder, Eddie Rieker's 2002 murder, and Sharon Christine Anderson's strange 2000 disappearance. Appearance. Washington has a dark history of serial killings, and these cases continue to capture public attention and curiosity. If you think this is all the amazing content we have on crime, you're mistaken. Grab some more popcorn, click on a card on your screen, and I'll see you there.